Good evening, this is Ken Long from Tortoise Capital with a Tortoise chat room daily debriefing from January 24th, last Friday, 2014. Friday, January 24th was a pretty special day. Uh, these are daily charts looking back about four months. And so what we've had is a um, generally bullish quiet move up from uh, about 167 uh, up to 185 uh, almost interrupted by pullbacks uh, except for one here that immediately uh, reversed and went higher all of this deriving from the last little 5% pullback uh, here and then a, this long uh, year-end quiet bull well on January 24th that all changed changed with a 300 point loss in the Dow uh, which uh, was certainly contrary to the primary trend large volatility large volume and now there was a lot of discussion over the weekend about oh, what's it all mean is this the end of the bull is this the beginning of the end the end of the beginning what's it all mean so you never know that in, ahead of time but what you can do is put things into perspective in a systematic way and so uh, what we look at here on multiple time frames first is that using the blended monthly rebalancing uh, threshold of a four month moving average as the demarcation line between uh, uh, buying and cash, uh, we can see that we're getting pretty close to that price level around 177.50. Uh, now that happens to line up pretty nicely with the daily regression line crossover framework the RLCO which uh, puts price very near the southern boundary of the floodplain which is the 30 period Bollinger Band plus or minus two uh, and that is a uh, certainly a system shock so we had price uh, which had been holding the north edge of the river uh, for almost two months now is violated uh, to the downside now the last time it did that back here in um, around uh, just before Christmas, the market responded with a move from 177 to an all-time high at 185. So can that happen again? Certainly. Um, this move up was not an intraday sell-off, but was rather a gap down and reversal. Uh, and so, on the long-term basis, we're really only looking at a about a three percent pullback uh, from the all-time swing high. And until it gets out to 10%, it uh, uh, could be classified as market noise. Still, it doesn't feel like noise if uh, you're in the middle of that. Um, and so one of the things we want to use are the edges that we have as intraday traders, as well as swing traders, as well as position traders. And, and here's what I mean by that. If we take a look at the market health check throughout this period of this upward uh, quiet bull, I want you to just notice that the the green channel here, the center green line is the 90-day regression line, which defines for us the long-term trend. Uh, very healthy, very positive, sloping up, and the boundary of this RAF regression channel is formed by the maximum excursion from the regression line during the look back period which happened on Friday and puts that 90 day trend line at risk uh, if it uh, violates um, in this upcoming week so it actually that framework does help us see that we are at a um, potential critical state here where we have the ability to frame a high reward to risk trade in either direction if the market finds support here, uh, it can get all the way back up to the top of the channel and test 185. That's a good swing trade move to the far side of the river and beyond. But if it fails here, then these support levels become price targets on the way down. And you can see that the beginning of a panic move here would uh, potentially be uh, a high reward to risk ratio trade in that direction. So that's why we define this as a critical state. Now I want to talk a little bit about intraday trading um, in a bull market and what I want you to notice is that throughout this bull market up there have been a number of these one day large body red candles one day adverse moves against the primary trend. Uh, in every case 
These are large range days um, uh, with the open near the high of the day and the close near the low of the day. So very directional day in terms of what we think of as signal to noise ratio. Very high signal, very little noise, uh, noise being defined by uh, the candle wicks. So it's not unusual then to see uh, those big red candle days or an adverse large range day against the primary trend. Now in every case during this bull market the market responded with buying on dip opportunities and so the counter reaction to those has been large white candles until it gets back to something like fair value whatever that means. So you saw three days of uh, large range candles here all signal very little noise. Uh, two more after this big red uh, one two big white candles very directional very directional day here very directional day here so the potential for a second uh, selling day here with large range certainly big gap down Monday certainly possible but it could also be a big white candle in response and uh, would put the nay uh, the naysayers in their place and so that's why this is a critical state. You can make a compelling argument for a large range day in either case. So while we'd like to take advantage of the longer term primary trend with swing trading and position trading in the usual way, uh, what can we do about these days that seem to come out of nowhere that are uh, adverse moves and, and what can we do about that? Well, one of the things we can do with intraday trading is to trade with the primary trend of the day. And by that, I mean the following. Let's go back and look at the market health check. I've marked off green, yellow, and red here to indicate what my general strategy towards the intraday trade is, what my bias is. If price is up in the green zone, then that means it's above the previous swing high. There's no resistance overhead. I want to automatically be long in the strongest sectors. Similarly, if price breaks down below 177 here, I want to be short. Uh, the weakest sectors like right now that would be Latin America or Brazil. While the market is inside this trading range in the yellow however what I want to do is try to be aligned intraday with the primary trend of the day so that when we get these large signal to noise ratio days like the big red candles or in response these big white candles that are mostly signal very little noise I want to be able to find myself trading in that direction as driven by price. So we, we do that in two ways. One is with the regression line crossover framework, which is a little more complicated than the simple uh, frog system, which based uh, strictly on uh, the magnitude of the price move in a particular direction. Uh, here's an example of um, during the day, market is trending down. Uh, there is some evidence of price reversion back to the mean here, and we try a regression line crossover uh, signal pattern in XIV. That was the second trade of the day. Um, we, uh, we see the regression line crossover outside the river. We take our entry. It moves towards the Bollinger Band mean, uh, but fails uh, on the third fail bar, or actually the, the second fail bar here. Uh, we get out with a scratch. The market continues to sell off in the direction of the primary trend of the day. Uh, it finds another bottoming moment here. It has a regression line crossover outside the river. There's a 1, 2, 3 RLCO re-entry uh, at the edge of the river. Uh, we buy that one at 33 with a 30 cent stop. This one moves to the far side of the river and on the pull back to the edge of the river we exit at 33.56 for almost uh, 1.9 R. And this is a, a counter trend intraday trade uh, which <coughs> uh, was also supplemented by trading in the primary uh, direction of the day at this failure here at the edge of the river there were short positions set up in here actually going along with VXX uh, and then this looked like the end of a nice run in VXX and so that's that prompted the uh, the move to the upside so intraday by letting the intraday primary uh, trend uh, steer you into the correct direction for the day we may have a way to take advantage of these large signal to noise ratio trades regardless of the larger primary trend now we'd like to see uh, 
large signal days in the direction of the primary daily trend. Those are the easiest frog days of all. But even on days that are big signal down during a bull market, we can actually make our move up. One of the things we got to be cognizant of is that when we do see uh, these runaway moves, like in this case, this is on two hour charts, uh, a gap up in VXX and starting to run away, uh, it leaves this sideways quiet channel behind. We have to have rule sets that allow us to recognize that something significant is going on. That's what the RLCO framework allows us to do is differentiate between price that's in the river, which is choppy, noisy, normal, and breakaway moves that are leaving the river, leaving the floodplain, and then when we get this long spike up that's even outside the third Bollinger Band, now we know that that's an extraordinary move and that's a time to start um, uh, adapting our exit rules to take advantage of this anomaly and preserve that profit rather than believing that's necessarily the sign of great things to come and sticking around longer than it needs to be because if we've got a 30 or 40 cent stop in here this could be 2R in that spike that goes up and then comes back and to give back 2R would kind of be unconscionable uh, in a situation we can readily identify as being exceptional and that's what I mean in here by saying that our rule sets or our frameworks need to be comprehensive so as to cover contingency plans in uh, normal sideways chop and then expansive runaway moves. We need a way to be able to distinguish between those. From the chat room, one of the things we were talking about here, <clears throat> this is the uh, this is an SPY trade, and this is on two hours, and this is a sideways quiet channel uh, pattern in here. Fails out of the river. Uh, our RLCO framework allows us to take advantage of that on the downside, either by trading the inverse or trading the VIX XIV pair. But this particular pattern gets our attention, in which we see. Uh, a move well outside of the floodplain, in fact beyond the third Bollinger Band, followed by a sharp reversal, and then in the next two hour bar we see a higher low and beginning of a consolidation pattern, and the quiz for us is what is that pattern? Well, it's the Anderson regression line stretch, and we have ways of, of trading inside this pattern in a risk adjusted way. Uh, something that I want to show here is the integration of the frog system with the regression line crossover. Uh, point number one over in this region, we have the frog and the half frog standard deviation marked off. From our daily reports, we use those uh, price values as the differentiation between signal and noise for intraday moves. In this case, it happened to be 70 cents in symbol VXX. That's a full frog standard deviation. Half of that is 35 cents. Point number two, we're going to apply those values uh, from the opening. So the vertical blue line here is the open. This one is 30 minutes in. This is an hour in, which is the different times when our three different frog strategies fire. So um, uh, from the open, <coughs> excuse me, uh, and we're the market is, is going up, so we're going to measure from the low of the day. And... Um, a full frog standard deviation from the open would have to travel north, uh, the full yellow bar. A half frog standard deviation would have to travel half a bar. Uh, and so any trade that happens before the 30 minute mark in the frog we call the leap frog. At 30 minutes it's the quick frog. At 60 minutes if we wait that long it's the slow frog. And so at uh, point number three what we have is a leap frog if we were to use the accelerated leapfrog, which is wait for a half a standard deviation move and then use a full standard deviation trailing stop. That would give us a long entry at three with a trailing stop here at the red line, which is that full 70 cent move. When price moves in our favor, that, that exit uh, trails up. Um, the exit for this whole trade is that red line. Uh, it gets us out at point number seven. So uh, this is the frog and the half frog standard deviations applied. This is the quick frog entry on the uh, accelerated frog. Uh, it's <clears throat> at uh, point number four, the RLCO shows support at the river. So if we combine our RLCO framework with the frog, what we end up seeing is uh, an important 
price moment here where uh, it was sideways and chopping and then finds support at the edge of the river and then takes off again. Well, that coincides with point number five, which is a leapfrog on a full standard deviation move with a full standard deviation uh, trail, which would be essentially this red line. And so that's a, that's a nice uh, low risk idea to enter here because we have the intersection of two different and separate uh, disciplines. And one is a full standard deviation move off the low um, after a 30 minute wait and also uh, support at the edge of the river, which is a, a reason enough to get in by itself. Um, point number six is the maximum favorable excursion during this trade uh, in the frog. It gets to the edge of the river. Uh, and I'm sorry, the edge of the floodplain, and then starts to fail as as it's not surprising when it does that. Statistically, that's the probable move. Uh, it's not unreasonable for uh, someone who entered at at uh, at three or five to take a profit in here without waiting too long. The mechanical frog simply says uh, trust your stops. In this case, that stop would have been hit at point number seven, which is a full standard deviation adverse move from the maximum favorable excursion at seven for a favorable trade. Uh, point number eight is a potential uh, re-entry opportunity with the frog uh, using the half a standard deviation retracement because we have uh, we've cashed a favorable trade uh, it makes a half frog move in the primary uh, trend direction of the day a re-entry at eight is possible in the uh, discretionary frog system, in which case we would pick up either a full standard deviation trail stop at point nine, and that would be this red line, which gets us into the money pretty quick as the price moves up, or you could use a half SD stop, and that would give you the dotted line, which lines up nicely with the dragon and the parabolic SAR. So uh, that's a choice that you can make once you're into the day and during the, uh, during the lunchtime period. Uh, and in position number 10, we're in the money in either uh, trade. Uh, and so that becomes a, an issue for trade management. Now, I want to also just highlight the idea of the fail stat at point number 11 and 11. The fail stat is the average uh, distance, uh, I'm sorry, the gain stat. That's the average distance from the open to the high of the day over the last 30 days, how far it has uh, on average moved to the high of the day. And what we have here is from the open, uh, if we move that gain stat up, uh, at point number 12 is where we would expect the market to uh, have a decision point. That if it behaves like the average uh, candle of the last 30 days, this would be a logical level where it would, uh, it would fail. In this case, it broke through to the far side of the river, and when it pulled back, it found support at that level, and then what was once resistance is now support, that would give us more confidence to enter at location number eight. So there's a, here's a way that we can start adding some of our statistical insights from the gain stat, the fail stat, the gap stat, add that to the frog, and with the RLCO, we have a very robust intraday uh, strategy. Uh, this was um, a, uh, a trade in IWM. Uh, the previous one was VXX, so that's the volatility spike. So when it's going up, the market is failing. Well, this is what the market looked like when it was failing, and now here's our uh, here's our open. Um, and uh, point number one, the frog standard deviation and half a frog are indicated here. In this case, it's uh, 50 cents in IWM is the standard deviation, and half of that is 25 cents. And the uh, in this case, the fail stat, <coughs> which is the average distance from the open to the low of the day of the previous 30 days, gives us an indication of what the average uh, intraday support level might be if this candle is going to behave like the average of the last 30 days. Now, what's tricky on this one is that the average candle the last 30 days has been up because it's been such a strong bull, but this is a day when the market's failing, so we have to take that into account. Uh, so point number two is where we apply those frog standard deviations. This would be the open. This was the previous close. This is the open. Uh, this is half a frog. This is a full frog standard deviation fail, so we could get an entry at uh, three, uh, and remember this is all leapfrog in here, because, or I'm sorry, yeah, leapfrog, 
because it's between the open and 30 minutes into the session. So any entry in here that doesn't wait that 30 uh, minutes uh, would be classified as a uh, leapfrog entry. So if we were to uh, wait for just a half a frog, we could get an entry at three with a um, uh, with a full stand, standard deviation stop would give us this dotted line, uh, and then it rejoins the uh, primary stop here. At if we uh, wait for a leapfrog with a full standard deviation move with a standard deviation trail, we get the entry at four, and then oh, I'm sorry the entry yeah the entry at four, and then a full standard deviation stop would be this red line. If we had entered at three and it moved half an SD in our favor here, then that stop would have uh, rejoined um, the uh, the traditional frog at here, and then both are trailing with a full standard deviation stop here. Five is the maximum favorable excursion. Uh, eight is the fail stat application here now. So this would not be an irrational place to take a profit because you've got a maximum favorable excursion. Um, you've got a good trade in hand regardless of your entry. It's finding support where it's supposed to find support. We don't know what kind of day this is going to be. You can see that it spent quite a bit of time uh, over here uh, in this sideways uh, channel. Uh, so that's not an irrational place to take a profit and to uh, make bank in the first 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, at point number six what we have is a quick frog on a full uh, full SD move. So now we're 30 minutes into the trade. We are more than one SD uh, below but not more than two. So this is a short position here because the market is continuing to fail. We would be uh, uh, entering short here with a stop at the red line and now just managing the trade. And as the market continues to fail that day, uh, we end up getting a nice move. Uh, this is an example of, <coughs> excuse me, of a uh, frog move in a, uh, in one of our trading uh, favorites, uh, CLF. Um, we're uh, using actually a uh, regression line crossover here. We have a uh, gap down. And in fact, the setup on this one was that um, CLF had been a max pain range compression uh, setup. And that's one where if it takes out the previous day's high, we want to be long. But if it fails through the low, we want to be short. This is one that gapped down below yesterday's low and then immediately started failing. And that's uh, plenty of information to be able to get short initially here uh, and then using our typical 30 cent stop for CLF uh, with a trail and that's following the dragon all the way down. This one gets down uh, near the fail stat uh, and so uh, we and the market was starting to reverse here as well so we decided to cash this one for 0.5R uh, after about 30 minutes into the trade. And the places that we find these different uh, uh, pieces of information from the daily report um, are, they can be summarized in uh, report number four for ETF 30, tactical, which is a, like it shows, a comprehensive summary of signals for the 30 ETFs that we're interested in all the time. And these are some extracts of these reports. We can find the fail stat, that's the average fail to the, um, uh, from the open to the low of the day for the previous 30 days on uh, page 8 the fail stat uh, page 9 is the gain stat it's how far they have risen from the open to the daily high uh, on average over the last 30 days the frog statistics if we want to go deeper into daily weekly and monthly frog data to come up with those standard deviations and then the gap statistics uh, allow us although I didn't cover this in there we use that um, statistics on the 200 day and the 30 day gap uh, in order to classify the day as a small gap or a large gap day because we know that there's a correlation between the size of the gap and the size of the subsequent follow through that day. So when we see big gaps we have reason to believe that this could be a large range day in which case uh, we really want to be active traders and then let the frog and the RLCO framework guide us into the primary trend uh, of the day.
and hopefully it aligns with the longer term trend because then the trade is easier there's less resistance there's more people that believe in it uh, but if it's against the long term trend then we can take maybe tighter stops take our profits a little sooner and then this will act as hedges that protects our longer term positions that are with the primary trend so that's the daily debriefing from january 24th thanks for your kind attention keep your risk measured and your powder dry